Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30 from the Think Tech Studios in downtown Honolulu in the Pioneer Plaza in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, especially this time of the year when the mainland is suffering from some very cold weather. Uh, this is a show that focuses on success stories of businesses in Hawaii. We've all heard the challenges. We know that there's some issues, uh, but there are companies that have gotten around these challenges and have made it successful. Today, we have a, a company that's known as an acronym PAU or POW. Uh, it helps companies level the playing field a little bit. Uh, they're able to save uh, some companies some costs. Uh, they're able to make things more efficient uh, and to maybe allow the owners to focus a little bit more on the businesses that they are actually trying to manage. Uh, PAU, we have the, the co-founder, uh, Fred Parr, who is here today. And then we have one of the key office managers, uh, implementation manager and, and operations uh, guru uh, for PAU, uh, Nick Leong. And they're gonna be here today to, to tell us a little bit about what PAU is and how they can help uh, businesses in Hawaii. Uh, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having us. Thank you, thank you right. uh, Fred, since you're the senior guy to my left, uh, <laughs> can you start out a little bit and just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and, and where you're from and how you got to where you're at today? Sure. Um, I was originally born in Japan uh, many years ago, uh, and I grew up most of my life in Tokyo, uh, going to American school there. And, uh, and my, I finished my high school in um, California. I went to university there. Whereabouts in California? Uh, in Newport Beach area. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, college was in Long Beach, Cal State Long Beach. And from there, I, I joined the banking industry. And I uh, was out in Wall Street a little bit. In New York? Yes, wow. in New York. So that was a good time. Uh, good, good markets um, right before the crash. That's a good time there. to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Then I then my career uh, changed over. I was, because of my language, I could speak Japanese. I was sent over to Japan. Uh, I and who, who sent you to Japan? Well, I was with. Uh, I went originally with, uh, which is now Bank of America right now, but it's, it was called Security Pacific. Mm. And b back then, uh, it gets into a little long story, but uh, there's a Glass Steagall Act which broke apart, and then we were able to do securities. Uh, business with the banks. As they say, the Chinese wall fell. Yes, absolutely. So I was there for about uh, four years, then I moved on to Hong Kong, and I was started trading uh, equities, uh, Asian equities along with Japanese equities. And then I moved back uh, with another firm called Solomon Smith Barney. Oh, yeah. And I ran their desk for several years. And Did I, you know Kenny Wong by any chance? Uh, I, I do know of him, yes, yes, but I was mostly on the institutional side, so. Okay. And then, uh, then, we, then I moved back to Japan, uh, once again, with another investment bank. I was headhunted, uh, which was the ABN Admiral, which is a Dutch outfit, and I ran their equities and futures and options. So most of my background is in banking. Um, so. Well, banking, securities, risk management, risk management. you know. And then uh, I met my wife, uh, actually, when I was going to Long Beach, and she's originally born and raised in Hawaii. Uh -huh. uh, Windward girl, Kaneohe girl. So that's how, how my roots uh, got embedded in Hawaii. And after banking, uh, about four years ago, uh, I left investment banking. And I came back to Hawaii, and that's how I got into uh, Pacific Advantage with my other partners. Very good. Yes. Well, that's a very interesting history and background. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of international travel. That's very fun. Um, tell me, Nick, how about yourself? Um, born and raised here in Hawaii. Uh, I went to school at Punahou, um, and then Punahou guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah sorry. <laughs> um, and then I went to uh, California to go to college. Um, I went to Santa Clara University up up by San Jose. Uh, um, okay, a little chilly, but yeah, yeah, and. Uh, you know, I, I ended up missing the food and the people and, and going to the beach, so I decided to come home, um, spend some time with the family. And uh, uh, I went into the family business, which is actually in, in parking management. 
Um, so we, I did that for a few years and then decided that I wanted to give uh, being an entrepreneur a shot. So uh, me and my girlfriend opened up a small retail store. Um, we ran that for a few years, decided it was way more work than we were it's willing to put tough, into it. Retail yeah, is tough. Retail yeah. is, the hours are, are nuts. And um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of work. Great learning experience though. Um, then I decided to, um, at the same time I was working at Apple um, as a side job and that kind of got me into the tech world. Um, and then from there, I, uh, I, I slowly drifted into what kind of what we're going to talk about today, the PEO companies. And um, I met Frank and Fred, had a great opportunity to sit down with them. Um, and, and here I am today. Very good. Yeah. Now, I, I can't help but ask you, but um, if I ever have any problems with my iPhone, you can help me with this? I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a good you, discount you, on my rate. <laughs> 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 right. Very good. Um, well, it, it, very diversified backgrounds, which is really good because uh, both of you bring something to the table that can help a variety of different businesses out there, you know, uh, retail. And, and I know one of the other co-founders uh, is Frank, uh, Frank Felix. Uh, he's got construction connections. That's correct. Yeah. And so there's, there's a, a lot that's out there that you guys bring to the table that can really help businesses uh, make things work here in Hawaii. Now, tell me a little bit uh, about PAU. What, what is PAU? Well, uh, PAU is an acronym for Pacific Advantage Unlimited. And we're in the PEO business. So right. PEO is uh, an ac also an acronym for uh, Professional Employee Organization. So what we do is we help, um, well, we give added value and we help uh, you know, smaller companies, which is Hawaii's consistent uh, mainly of uh, small companies. Uh, so we're able to give them payroll services, also uh, provide them with medical, uh, workers' comp, and other insurances, which is necessary for a business to thrive, right? Uh, to be and also to be compliant. Now, the definition of a small business is what less than a hundred employees, less. Uh, as of this year, it's 50 employees. 50, okay. Yes. And with the uh, uh, ACA or Obamacare, uh, it is going to be from 2017, 100 employees. Okay. So that's a large company. In, well, in for Hawaii, Hawaii. Yes. yeah. I think uh, what, it's about 97% of all the businesses in Hawaii are considered to be small businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's the majority of businesses. Yes. Yeah. And so, all right, so whether it be 50 or 100, if there's a company that's got less than that number, um, they, they come to you and you can help them do what? Um, you know, basically uh, a small company can come to us and get um, support for HR needs. So if they need help hiring people, or let's say a small business doesn't know how to, uh, how to create a, a company handbook, we can assist them with things like that on the HR side, as well as, you know, a big part is to keep them compliant, um, you know, with with uh, all the changes in medical, mm -hmm. it's easy to you know to not understand it fully, and we can help everyone sure. stay compliant, and, and as well with payroll and, and your insurances. Well, just labor laws. Mm -hmm. I mean, labor the compliance laws, yeah. area in the labor laws with wages and, and that sort of thing could be a big challenge mm -hmm. for folks. Mm -hmm. You know, but I guess just as importantly as maintaining compliance and helping take some of that work off the owner's plate, um, there's also potentially some opportunity for doing things that may be a more competitive price. You know, I mean, you, you actually put these employees on your payroll and then they uh, can take advantage of maybe some of the group benefits that you've got. Is that how that works? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the way that our, these PEO companies work is generally we're co-employers with the, the client company and um, we hire their employees under our um, our tax numbers, and we, we go to carriers and to uh, like health health carriers and insurance carriers as a big group. And because we have greater numbers, you know, it's economy of scales, and we can sometimes get better pricing uh, for different clients. Right. I mean, there's there's no guarantees, but mm -hmm. if a, a company went and they had 25 employees, um, as opposed to you going with say four or 500 mm -hmm. employees. Mm -hmm you have a little bit more leverage. You might be able to get some better, com more competitive pricing than they could with only 25 as opposed to 500. Sure, yeah. 
Yeah, and that's, that's going to work uh, in a lot of different areas. I mean, does that include, I, I guess, workers' comp and that kind of area too? Yes, uh, workers' comp, uh, as I mentioned before, medical. Uh, we could pass on the large, which we call block business, the discount that we obtain from that from health carriers, uh, workers' comp uh, carriers, and pass that on to the clients um, so it saves the bottom line. Uh, once again, uh, some company that has only five or 25 people will get uh, probably a less competitive rate than what we will get at, at a large group. Right. So, right. Uh, you know, especially a, if it's a new company who yeah. doesn't really have a lot of history, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard for them to, you know, go in and, and get some very competitive pricing for some of these, you know, employee benefits um, when there's no history that uh, they can look at. You know, they've got to almost take like a worst case scenario and price it accordingly. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Now, now, what else? Um, you know, I guess PEU, and I'm not going to distinguish between the two, but PAU and PEO, um, basically you do PEO services. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where the employee actually goes on to your federal ID numbers and your process as a, a group. But they don't lose their individuality. I mean, there's, the companies still have their employees. They're still working for them. They get their W-2s based on, you know, the, the hours that they work for that company. And... Um, and there's employee handbooks that can be created, and, and so the, the owners of the company and the managers of the company don't really lose control of the employees. All it is, it's simply a, a processing, a back office function, right? Absolutely. You know, they'll still maintain, you know, they'll still uh, maintain the scheduling. They'll, you know, hire and manage their employees. We're there more for support and, and to help advise. So, you know, maybe Whereas before, if you're the owner, you have to make the decision all on your own. Mm -hmm. Hey, what are we, you know, what's the best way to handle this situation? You know, now you can tap into us and we, we have uh, people who specialize their whole careers in HR or payroll. And they can be, you know, give you a, a career worth of knowledge to help you make the decision. But the decision is still yours to make as the owner. Right. I yeah. mean, you still have responsibility for mm -hmm. that employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you, you need to have all the proper... Uh, Procedures in place, you know, job descriptions and, and management oversight and that sort of thing. The employer doesn't lose that. That still has to be maintained by the employer. So yeah. we, like uh, Nick just mentioned, we add, put added value on the HR aspect, being specialized in that. But also uh, on the payroll side, where a regular accountant and, and a firm could relinquish the payroll aspect of it. Uh, taxes, 940, 941. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of moving parts that if uh, that person were to take care of it at, at a small company, there's a lot of uh, things to, uh, you know, applications and reportings that they would have to do, which we will be able to take care of that off the plate. And then they could concentrate on their business, like sending out invoices or Things of that sort. Generating right. revenue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's you know, and that piece, that compliance piece of the timely filing and the timely payment, I mean that's critical because sometimes you make one little mistake and you're late. It can be expensive. Yes. Sure. Yeah. You know, I mean I've seen some of the uh, the you know, late fees it can climb pretty quickly and they're calculated sometimes on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's something that you really have to be paying attention to and be comfortable with in order to stay on top of it. Um, you know, there, there's other uh, services. I guess there's um, a way for them to call in if they have, like, labor issues or questions or, or that. There, you, you have a, a group that you work with that can help answer some of those questions, right? Yeah, sure. We, you know, we partner with with uh, a couple different vendors, um, one you know for Ventaggio HR, uh, uh, they're great on HR support. They help us, you know, they specialize in that labor issues and any type of HR issues. You know, they'd be the first people that we talk to, and um, we really get them. Uh, we really get a lot of support from them. Well, let's um, let's hold that thought okay, for just sorry, a second. Sorry, no, yeah. no, no, that's all right. And and we're gonna come back and uh, take a quick break and come yeah. back in about one minute, and then maybe we can talk a little bit about that some more. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here today talking to two of the, uh, the key players over at a company called PAU, PAU, which is a PEO here in Hawaii. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. 
I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Aloha, and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We just finished our quick break, and we're going to get right back into uh, discussing a little bit about some of the other services that PAU offers uh, to their customers. And, and one that is very important uh, is going to be some of the HR consulting piece that when somebody has an HR issue, uh, they actually have a number that they can call and you can, uh, or your affiliate company, uh, can help them through the process. And that company is Vantaggio? Correct, yeah, Vantaggio HR. Um, yeah, like, like you said, you know, they, they, they're really the experts for us. They help, you know, um, guide us through, through different issues. And they have a 24-hour hotline. Uh, you know, they have presence, a presence here in Hawaii, an office here in uh, California and New York. Um, so, you know, they span a wide gamut of different areas, so they have a, a lot of knowledge. Uh, for uh, for us to tap into and our clients to tap into, right? And I I know a couple of the principals over there. You know Lorraine uh, mm -hmm. Bufuco, mm -hmm. and then also Kara. Uh, and Kara is on the local board of directors for Sherm. Mm -hmm. And Lorraine I know has been a, a frequent speaker at the national Sherm conferences, which. I'm not sure what Sherm. I think it's Society of Human Resource Managers. Sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they're they're very connected. They're into mm -hmm. that um, part of the industry that that focuses on HR issues and and laws and compliance and that sort of thing. Um, and so it's a great resource to have available. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a 24-hour hotline. So we need to test it someday and see if they answer us. Someday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what else? There's other affiliates that you work with too. Uh, yes. Uh, also, uh, remind you that the handbook is a very big uh, thing for uh, small businesses because every business should have some kind of a handbook. Uh, it could be catered or um, made out to that specific company, whichever field they're in. If, if they may be in a restaurant business or construction or whatever. So. So that's a, I wanted to add that in there. Well, that's an important part because I think the uh, the employee handbook, we could actually have a whole show on that because, yes. you know, one of the first, if you do have a labor mm -hmm. issue, one of the first things that come up is, you know, what are the rules? What, what, what are written? What's been communicated? Um, what is the employee supposed to do? Is it consistent with the handbook? Is it consistent with the job description? Having all that in place is, is very important should any issue come up. Uh, and having somebody help uh, a company walk through that, make sure that they're in compliance and they have all that there, I think is invaluable. Now, how much does that cost if somebody needed to have that uh, as part of, you know, uh, PAU? Well, it's a standard cost. It's included in our fees, but if it needs to be uh, really c catered and written up for them, then Ventagio HR will take care of that, and then there'll be an agreement. Right. But uh, but basically, the basic document itself is free. Yes. 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 Yeah. You know, and so that comes with doing business with PAU. And and we've done our homework with Ventaggio, and so the handbook that comes with PAU that you're mentioning is you know compliant with all the state and, right. and labor law you know requirements. So for Hawaii, yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. And, and they've been in Hawaii for a number of years, mm -hmm. so I'm mm -hmm. sure they're pretty familiar with what's going on. So yeah. that that's a great benefit and additional you know value added service. That PAU offers, mm -hmm. yeah, and then um, there's also some other opportunities that uh, they can take advantage of. Yes, uh, on the bookkeeping, accounting side, uh, we part we have another partner. Um, uh, Bernice is the owner. Bernice Parsons. Uh, the name of the company is um, uh, Verit Account. Uh, they're very um, uh, and the accounting, like I said, and the bookkeeping side, they're adverse, and then they could c take care of the needs of, you know, small things from entries, journal entries, things of that sort to, on the accounting side. You know, so, I, I've been doing CPA stuff and bookkeeping uh, in Hawaii for a long time, and I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of different services. Um, and I, I've had the opportunity to work with VertAccount uh, and other bookkeeping accounting services. and. You know, I've been pretty impressed with what Vertacount does. Um, you know, they're they're quick, 
they're, they've got some pretty talented people. Uh, they get things done on a, a timely basis. Now, the, the client has to provide the information on a timely basis to, in order for them to process it. And assuming that that's done, I mean, I've seen, I've seen them crank out some good financial statements, uh, you know, within a few days after the end of the month. So that's, that's a great service. So, you know, it sounds almost like you guys are becoming like a one-stop shop for a small business to outsource a lot of their back office, you know, the administrative pieces, the ones that maybe they don't have a lot of comfort with that uh, they have to do because they are in business, uh, but they can actually contract that out and have the, the payroll and the HR and the bookkeeping, all of that done uh, through you guys. Yeah, that's that's exact, exactly uh, right. You know, and, and coming pulling from my own experience when, you know, me and my girlfriend and I had that little retail store. Um, you know, we we were the best resources we had. You know, we that was before I knew what a PEO company was, and um, you know, we didn't even know what questions to ask. You know, and you don't know what you yeah, don't know exactly. You know, and and you can you can Google stuff, and and but I mean, your time is so precious when you're trying to run a business, you know, and, and um, to have someone to bounce uh, ideas or to keep you in compliance, I think is, is well worth it, especially when you're, you know, a one or two man operation or a five man operation, y your time is, is really precious to your operation. Well, and what's interesting is that, you know, sometimes a two man operation, uh, you know, if you're one of the two people there, you can always find time to do something and mm -hmm. it may not be mm -hmm. the best use of your time. But when you start adding employees, complexities start increasing pretty quick mm -hmm. because not only do you have customers to deal with and all the compliance issues and getting the work done, but then you also have to manage the employees. And that starts complicating things even more. So it's, I, my opinion is it's best to get this set up right, right out of the gates. You know, and, and this can help you grow in a controlled sort of way. You don't have to make anything up as you go along. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've had clients that try to do it they give it a good shot. They may get about 80% of it done, but the rest of it, you know, they're just making things up and they're trying to process it and they end up that maybe it wasn't quite exactly the way it should have been. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you said, you don't know what you don't know, right? You don't know the questions to ask. And, and there's a lot of stuff. I mean, enough for us to keep us busy studying all the labor laws and, and the payroll laws and everything to so, you know, it, companies can, can let us worry about that stuff and they can focus on what makes them money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's where they need to be focusing. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can't make a lot of money becoming an expert on payroll if you're not selling the service, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but you can make a lot of money focusing on selling product to customers. You know, and that's, that's what I always try to encourage my, my clients to do. Um, now, just to, to kind of give the audience a little bit of a, an explanation on how this would work. Let's just say that there's a company out there that they've been kind of struggling with trying to deal with all this stuff. Um, business is, is fairly good. They're, they've got some good sales growth coming in, um, but they're just not able to take care of the, the customers the way they like, and they need to try to find some time to free themselves up to focus on this. So they come to you, and they go, you know, I've got, I need some help, and I need to get some of this back office stuff off my table, off my desk. How do you go about going through that process, you know, from, from soup to nuts, real quick? How do, how do they do it? They have to fill out an application. They got to give you some information. You begin the onboarding process. I mean, how does that work? Uh, yeah, generally, I mean, what we, we'd sit down with them and, and, you know, discuss kind of what our services are. And if they're interested, uh, we come up with, with a quote for them, you know, and uh, assuming we get the green light on that, we, we go through what's called an implementation phase, and, and that'll include... Uh, everything from, you know, we'll, we'll get a contract to them once they sign it. Uh, we have paperwork for the employees to fill out um, to hire them onto our federal tax numbers, like you said. Um, and then we'll, so we'll go out, we'll meet the clients, you know, at their convenience and, and their employees, have them fill out some paperwork. Um, and then that's, that's pretty much all the onboarding that needs to take place. And then from there, um, we might sit down with the client uh, for a meeting or two just to make sure that we have all of their their payroll nuances understood and we're prepared to process their payroll. Um, and then from there, it's, it's like just kind of handing everything over to us and letting us be, be the experts and helping you, you know, we'll cut the checks and mail them out to your employees for payroll. 
can you do direct deposit too? We can do direct deposit. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, but they're not completely cut out of the process. They still need to have a communication link with you to. I mean, for example, some people are going to be on hourly, you know, uh, uh, work weeks. Mm -hmm. So how do they communicate that to you? There's actually we have a a, a web page um, where they can go and click on each employee. We'll set up their own web portal for them and they can go in there and enter in the, the hours for payroll uh, each week or, or bi-weekly or semi-monthly, however they pay. Um, and so they'll just go down a list. It's almost like an Excel spreadsheet. Just Tell us in, how many hours, the hours. And yeah. then we'll take care of the taxes, make sure that that all adds up and everything. And you do the filing and, yep. and do all that. And if anybody calls with a nasty question, you can answer that too? Yeah, yeah. We, can <laughs> right. answer, we can be the experts for their employees who they may have a question on their taxes. How, how come... Yeah. Uh, I got charged this amount and we can answer those up for you. Super. Now, we, we're going to wrap up uh, here in just a, a minute or so. Um, but, you know, I, I've heard these stories about some PEOs having these really nasty contracts that once you get into them, you can't get out of them and there's big issues with it. I mean, yours is pretty straightforward, right? Yes. yes uh, we, sign, we both mutually agree. We have a contract that's signed. And then, as uh, long as there's 30 day notice, if we, if you're not unhappy with anything, uh, you could uh, terminate the contract. See that to me, that's a, a an important selling point because if, if there's a 30 day clause for you to transition out, um, that means you must be pretty confident that you're going to be doing a good job. Yes. If you try to lock somebody in for a year, that's telling me that that's a warning flag. That's something you got to be careful with this. Well, I, I think you know we're we're really trying to develop true partnerships and um, that means we have to hold up our end of the bargain too so hopefully you know there's no reason for for them to for a client to be unhappy with our services exactly and we we owe them that when you know when they sign the contract with us exactly after all you know it's service or we're service oriented uh, we've always motored uh, our company on that uh, we've been in business for eight years now and yeah. that's our core, uh, you know, servicing our clients to small and mid-sized companies. Very good. And we want to keep that going. I wish we had more time to talk, but we're kind of out of time. Um, you've got about 10, 15 seconds each. Is there any final words you want to do? Uh, we're looking forward to the new year. Uh, we've we got a lot of things that we want to implement. Uh, I think Pacific Advantage will reach out to the small and mid-sized and the community of Hawaii, and we'll keep growing and we'll help uh, uh, companies in Hawaii. Super. Nick? Um, I just want to say hi to my family and uh, mm -hmm. and to my fiance. Oh, fiance. Yeah. So girlfriend to fiance. Yeah, just recently. All right. Congratulations. All right. Well, what's I wanted, the date? I want to say Merry Christmas. Well, it's fast, but happy holidays. And my daughter, Jackie, and my son, Carson. All right. Take it of you. Very good. Well, <laughs> Happy so New Year, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Reg Baker, uh, host of Business in Hawaii. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30, and we highlight businesses in Hawaii that are successful, and we try to share some of the insight on how they made that happen. Uh, until next week, uh, aloha and Happy New Year.